And the other thing that I find kind of interesting, aside from all of this, is that, you know, they use this term libertarian. And the say, well, he used to identify as libertarian, but now he doesn't because it means this crazy prepper, gun nut thing. Um, and he goes, well, when I said it, I meant Ayn Rand. And what's interesting for anyone who actually knows about this stuff is that, like, look, Murray, Murray Rothbard was the one who really, like, um, uh, took the term libertarian and made it what we all know it today. It was there was a, it was used in Europe for a bunch of left wingers. He kind of reappropriated it, said we're going to use it to mean like the the pure capitalists. Ayn Rand hated the term libertarian, and Murray Rothbard and the whole movement was completely against it. So when he says, no, the term libertarian used to mean Ayn Rand, but now it means this like prepper gun nut thing, I just go, have have you like taken any time to look into this, to know what you're talking about, to like, like what are you even referring to? It's it, So it's just... It, it, what's shocking to me is the guy who's supposed to be the rationalist, science-based guy, just using these terms like in a way that you go, I don't, I don't think you've engaged with any of these people or their arguments or the literature or any of that. It's just very, very bizarre to me to say. Okay, so I, I, I knew a year ago on this, so I actually did a, a little poll um, to, that ended the other day, and it was, um, is Ayn Rand considered a libertarian? Um, no, uh, one on that, but it, it also led me to, uh, a few other disturbing things, which is, I'm going to play you one of these. Let's see here, which, um, oh yeah, here we go. So this is, um, which made me think about Yaron Brook. Okay. And, uh, mm -hmm. Ayn Rand, and we know that well, he's I'm hated, only hateful so, to some libertarians. There's some libertarians who I love, who are great, who I, su who I support, who I've worked with, uh, who I've been on panels with, who I've done all kinds of things. Um, the ones I hate tend to be the ones who tend to be the rabid anarchists, the people who believe that anarchism is a solution. And as I said, in my debate with an anarchist in Poland, I consider anarchism, and you can include so-called anarcho-capitalism in that, I believe that it's as bad as communism and fascism. I believe that it is the devil. It is really, really, really destructive to human life. Okay. Well, the devil. The uh, devil. The devil. I thought we were uh, fucking passionate atheists. By the way, I I met Yarn uh, last year at a Freedom Fest and hung out with him a bit, and he was like totally cool, uh, and we got along well. I don't know if he really knew like exactly you know who I was or what camp I fell into, but all of his arguments, you know, against like anarcho capitalism or against Ron Paul or against like any of like our camp, it always just. Div you know, again, for someone who's supposed to be this like objectivist, rational like guy, it all just like devolves into this like ad hominem nonsense. Like, oh, I consider you to be the devil. I consider you to be communists or something like that. It's like, okay, fine. I, f I figured like, out why he was nice to you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play this clip. I was gonna do it a little later, but I think it uh, it works uh, perfectly here now. Um, I think this one. Tom Wood should know better. Now, it's not just that he's an anarchist. It's that he's, uh, you know, he's, he's part of the Mises Institute, which is pro or semi-pro slavery in the South, right? It was anti the Civil War. That is, that has, you can find articles there, underlying racist agendas, not that Tom Woods is, but the organization he's affiliated with is, that are pacifists, which I consider, you know, nutty. They're pacifists. They're, they're anti-American in foreign policy, every sin in the world. They're pro-Hugo Chavez. It's, it's why I hate Ron Paul. Hate Ron Paul, not just dislike Ron Paul. It's because he's pro-Hugo Chavez, pro-Maduro's uh, regime. So I, I will not deal with people who are over the certain age, let's say 40, who advocate ideas that I consider fundamentally anti-life and who might be confused with objectivism. So that's probably why he gave you the, the okay, because you weren't quite 40 at the time. Oh, um, yeah, and, and there I, you go. And I don't want to say that Shermer is in this camp, but I think there's a lot of overlap, and it has to do with Penn, too. Uh, nothing wrong with if people are atheists at all, but I think you, you can have an atheist bent that turns you in a weird way towards anything that's not 
the, the, if you have any kind of religion, they'll dismiss it and then they'll, they'll use the evil terms. Uh, and I think Shermer does that, uh, in, unwittingly, but I think more so to Penn and obviously Yarnbrook. Yeah. It's just like, I don't know, in a weird way, it's just kind of disappointing. It's like, so re <laughs> like, I mean, come on, dude, like really, that's your argument. Just these blatant straw men, like just so blatant. Like it's like, oh, they were pro slavery. Like you can't find anyone at the Mises Institute who's ever said anything even remotely pro-slavery. But the point is that we have this kind of like national religion that says that when the South and North both had slavery and the South seceded and the North then enslaved through military conscription, an army right. to go invade the South where seven, six, seven hundred thousand people died. And like there's this huge, like, you know, like atrocity. And that's celebrated as the greatest thing ever. You go, God damn, maybe that's really not the greatest thing ever. And they go, oh, so I guess you're pro-slavery. Right. Or to say Ron Paul supports everyone who's anti-American. Like it's, it's on the level of saying that like um, if, I, if I oppose the war in Iraq, then I support Saddam Hussein. It's just like, it's just, I don't know, like, what do you even say to this? It's just so painfully stupid. And like, you're not even attempting to grapple with what their arguments are. And it's like, hey, here's the thing, like, Mr. Like Deep Thinker, I can say I'm completely against the war in Iraq because it just made the country way worse. It, a million people or something like that died. I think something like 15 to 18 million people were displaced at... And none of that makes me support Saddam Hussein. No. It's, you know, like, it's, and it's just like, if you can't even begin to have that, like, if you can't at least accept that, that that doesn't make you a Saddam Hussein supporter, then what do you even say to these people? Nobody supported Hugo Chavez. They were just making the point that America has no right to enforce their will around the rest of the world and that the people who rise up and try to, like, it, gain independence from America have a, a legitimate point. They have a legitimate case to do that. And, and so, I don't know. It's almost like... It's so like Yarn Brook. I've seen him when he's good. He makes really great fucking points. Yeah. I, I liked him when I met him and stuff. I just find this so beneath him that this is his argument.